If you're posting videos on Instagram, you don't want to use a wide video like this because it ends up being really small. You're better off using a square video, something like this, or a slightly portrait video like this. Plus, there's a few settings which you need to make sure are correct. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a new project made specifically for Instagram posts, as well as also showing you how to convert an existing project into a new timeline that will work really well on Instagram. So my name's Alex, this is Mr. Alex Tech, so let's open DaVinci Resolve and take a look. So here we are within DaVinci Resolve and I'm currently on the Edit tab. And as you can see, I've not yet added anything to my timeline, I've actually not even imported any media. So we need to open up our project settings. You can do that by either clicking on the cog in the bottom right hand corner, or with the keyboard shortcut of Shift and 9. And then your project settings window will appear, like so. Make sure to go to the master settings from the options on the left. And then we've got timeline resolution at the top here. Now I'm currently set to 1920 by 1080, which is a pretty standard resolution. Underneath here, you've got this four by processing box and you've got these two numbers. So we can just overwrite these to add a custom resolution. So if you want to go for that square Instagram post, all you need to do is change this first 1920 or whatever's in this box to 1080. So therefore I've got 1080 by 1080 and that will give us a square video. If you want to go for that slightly taller portrait style post, all you need to do is make sure the first number is 1080 and the second number is 1350. Now those, in my opinion, are the two best resolutions for video on Instagram. Underneath here, you've got the timeline frame rate. Instagram prefers 30 frames per second. So if you can shoot and edit in 30 frames per second, perfect. If you haven't, if you've shot in 24 or 25 frames per second, that's not a problem. Leave your timeline frame rate as 24 or 25. It's just to get the absolute most out of Instagram, you want to shoot at 30. Now, another quick tip from the menu on the left hand side, click on image scaling. And then in the middle here, we've got input scaling mist match resolution files scale entire image to fit. What that means is, I'll just show you if I hit save, I'm going to import some media now. If I add this video to the timeline, I can see I've got this portrait resolution, which is perfect, but this video is a standard landscape video. And what DaVinci Resolve is doing is just shrinking it down, making sure that it fits in over its longest edge like so. What we'd have to do then is zoom in, but just to save yourself the hassle, if we open up the project settings again, image scaling, change this option to scale full frame with crop and then hit save. And then whatever you import into this project, it will automatically zoom it in for you, cutting off the edges and making sure that it fills the frame. You can still then, of course, give the clip a click, open up your transform options, either by clicking on this icon here or opening up the inspector and going to transform. And then you can change the position, you can do any rotation or zooming to make sure that it looks perfect within your Instagram frame. And then from here, just edit your video as you usually would. Import any media, add music, do any color grading, text, whatever you want to do, just do it in exactly the same way that you usually would. Now, if you're converting an existing project, all the concepts are the same, it's just a slightly different method. So here you can see on my timeline, this is the Halloween video I made the other day. It's at a standard 1080p resolution, so we just need to convert that so it's ready for Instagram. So first thing I'm going to do is just highlight everything on my timeline just by clicking and dragging my mouse so it's all highlighted in red. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to copy or I can use the keyboard shortcut of Control and C. Then I'm going to hit Control and N on my keyboard or I can go to File and then New Timeline. This New Timeline prompt will appear. You first ask to give it a name, so I'm just going to call this Insta, and then we need to use custom settings. Click on format, and then within here, you can specify the timeline resolution of the new timeline. So let's go with the square one this time. I'm going to change that to 1080, so I've got 1080 by 1080. The frame rate, I shot all this at 25 frames, so I'm going to leave that as it is. And then underneath here, we've got this mismatched resolution files option again. So we're going to change that from scale to scale full frame with crop and then create. And that will create this new Insta timeline. As you can see, it's got the square resolution, which is perfect. And then come down here to your timeline. Make sure your playhead is right over to the far left. So it's on all the zeros here. 
and then right click and we can go to paste or of course you can use control and V and you'll paste in all of the video files and audio and everything else from your previous timeline. Because we set the scaling, everything's already set to fit, but you will of course need to make some amendments. As you can see here, my text isn't quite right. So I'm just gonna give that a click. I'll just reduce the size, reduce any scaling, move anything around as we need to. Now don't worry, your original timeline is still there. If I head into my media pool, I can see I've got this Insta timeline. I've got my original timeline, which was just called timeline one. So I can double click that to jump back into my original timeline. And then I've still got the Insta one there if I need to, I can hop back and forth between the two. Once you're ready to export, we just need to jump into the deliver tab. Now by default, you should land on the custom option up here. That's absolutely fine, that's where we need to be. You've got your file name, so obviously give it a file name and choose the location that you wish to save it to, again, as you usually would. Underneath here, you've got your video, audio and file options. Click on audio for starters and just make sure that the codec is AAC. It should be like that by default, unless you've amended it in the past. And then we go to video. You need to make sure that the format is set to MP4. The codec is the default one, which is H.264. The resolution should automatically pull through your timeline resolution. So 1080 by 1080 or 1080 by 1350, if you've amended it, and then you've got your frame rate. And then there we've got quality. Now, Instagram has a file size limit nowadays of four gigabytes, which is quite large. So you don't really need to worry about the quality too much. You can just leave it to automatic and best. But if you're having to transfer the file from your PC to your phone to then upload it to Instagram, you may want to bring those file sizes down. So what you can do is restrict the bitrate. Now for 1080p files being uploaded to YouTube, YouTube actually recommend about 8,000 kilobits per second as your bitrate. So just using that as a ballpark figure, if you set this between 8,000, maybe 12,000 kilobits per second, you should get still quite nice image quality while also helping to keep those file sizes down. Once that's all set, all you need to do, hit add to render queue, start your render, that will generate your file, and then you can upload it straight to Instagram. And that's it, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Any comments or feedback, please shove them down in the comment section below. And if you're new here, you enjoyed this video, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. Thanks ever so much for watching folks. Take it easy, I'll catch you next time. See ya. Bye bye.